Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Building on WordPress. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's video, we are going to take a look at how to add automated translation to your website. Now, this is kind of a Pandora's box of a topic because there are a ton of different methods to do this. Some of them involve plugins that duplicate pages in other languages, and it really comes down to what you prefer. I personally don't love the mess of having all of those different pages and needing to maintain them, but it does come at the sacrifice of a little less control over how the translation works and what the text is on the page. All of that said, we are going to take a look at one of the easiest ways to integrate automated translation on your WordPress website. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here we are on the Building on WordPress website, and as you guys know, this is still a giant work in progress. I kind of threw this together pretty quickly here, but there is some content on here that could use to be translated, so we're going to go ahead and give this a try. Now, as I mentioned, there are several different ways that you could go about doing this. A couple of the standard ways that are very popular in the WordPress ecosystem is WPML, which is a great plugin. This does sort of the duplicated pages in different languages, and then you also have Polylang, which functions in a similar Similar way. Then you have some of the more automated tools like Weglot, which is a phenomenal tool that I have used in the past, but it does come at a pretty hefty price tag depending on the amount of words that you are translating. But what we're going to do today is actually tap into G Translate via a third party tool, which allows us to do all of this for free. So let's jump back over to our building on WordPress site here. Let's jump into the back end of WordPress. Let's go down to our plugins here and we'll click add new plugin. Now from here, we are simply going to type in G translate and hit enter. And the first plugin you see over here by translate AI multilingual solutions, we're going to go ahead and install that. Now there is a paid version of this plugin, but what we're going to do here today is just going to utilize the free version. So we'll go ahead and activate G translate here. And with that activated, now we can begin configuring our translation tool. So let's go into settings and you'll see we have G translate right here. We'll go ahead and click on that. Now we get to configure our setup a bit. So you'll notice right here we have a widget look. And what's nice about this is you can choose one of these pre-styled designs and you can kind of see what it's going to look like in the widget preview over here. I actually really like this floating version, but you could play around with other ones as well. You could have a little globe and then you click on the globe and you could select different languages there. You could just have sort of a standard drop down with flags and have something like this here. But I really like this float version. I think it just looks nice and modern and the scrolling is really nice inside there with nice large flags. So I think that works. So we're going to go ahead and leave that as float. Now we have other items in here like show in menu show floating language selector all of these as you guys know i love using the cornerstone builder and all of this can be achieved pretty easily with the cornerstone builder so all we want to do is actually set up the functionality and the widget itself now you will notice we can actually pick a flag style 2d 3d png versus svg so we're going to go ahead and leave it on 2d so that we're using the svg files here and then i'm going to uncheck all languages and the only languages i want to use and i'm just picking these arbitrarily but we're going to say we want french we want uh i don't know let's do spanish and we want Japanese. So we're going to go ahead and click on those three there. And then we'll scroll down to the bottom and we'll click save. And it is as easy as that to get up and running. Now, what we want to do, because we're going to use the cornerstone builder to implement this is grab our G translate short code here and go ahead and copy that. And let's go ahead and open up our cornerstone builder. Now, I actually want to make this a floating button that sort of stays in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So what we're actually going to do is jump into our header. So I'm going to scroll down to headers here and you'll notice I have this GN1. So we'll go ahead and open up our header. And a great way to create a floating button is by adding it into the header. So we're going to go ahead and click on our header bar here, jump over to the outline and we are going to add an element and we're going to make that a div and that div is going to kind of show up right below our header bar here now within this div let's go ahead and add our raw content and then within that raw content let's go ahead and add our g translate short code now right off the bat nothing is happening but we'll see this all come together so now what we're going to do just so you can kind of see all of this taking shape let's go ahead and just add for the sake of example let's add just a background color to our div here um, and let's just add a little bit of padding to our div. We'll add one M all around. We're going to get rid of that later, but I want you to be able to see what's taking place here. So clicking on our div, you'll notice that the position is automatically set to relative. This is by default, but we're going to come in here and set this to fixed. And when we do that, it's going to look like the div disappears. You'll actually see we can hover on div down here and it does highlight it for us. Let's give it a Z index value of 10. And now it's bringing it up to the surface, but there's still nothing really loading in there. And you'll see why we gave it that background color so we can kind of see it moving around. So now within our fixed position, 
we want this to be 20 pixels from the bottom so you'll see it moves down to the bottom and we want it to be 20 pixels from the right and now it moves over to the right and now when we scroll through our site this little div here is going to just kind of hover there with whatever contents are inside it so now we can click on that div let's go ahead and get rid of our background color and get rid of our padding and we will save now let's jump over to the front end of the site and immediately you will see our widget loading down here and as we scroll that widget follows us throughout the site if the widgets dropping below your footer here we just have to give it a higher z index value so let's go ahead and do that and maybe just give it 99999 and click save and refresh and now it is showing up here so things are looking pretty good so now let's see how this works we're going to click here we're going to switch to japanese and immediately you will notice that it converts our text throughout the site to Japanese to the best of its ability let's go ahead and jump over here and do French and it does the same let's go over here and do Spanish and the same so as you can see a pretty nifty plugin that is incredibly simple to integrate and doesn't cost you a dime as always I hope you guys find these videos useful don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and I will see you guys in the next video peace